It's been almost nine years since I talked about camera scanning online with my blog and YouTube. My first video, you can check it out on the links at the end or in the description. And the nearly nine years since I first talked about camera scanning, I have used a lot of devices for camera scanning. My first thing was just this piece of cardstock I rubber banded to my light table. And some of us might remember the Lomography Digital Liza, a flatbed scanning device. Now Lomography has the Digital Liza Max and Plus, which can scan 120 film and 35 millimeter film. The main difference between the two being that the Max uses this Scan Deluxe base plate, basically, with this cool motion that actually uh, has some great possibilities has these rubber feet and a little cell phone stand which I did not use but I did test it to make sure it held a phone and it worked well. And this is the actual Digitalizer Plus. It's basically a tiny light table with a 120 frame that clamps into place and holds with magnets which is how it secures 120 film and the 35 millimeter film carrier. It's powered by a USB cable which I actually plugged into a battery instead of using wall power but I'm gonna keep the lights on here so you can actually see what's going on. The Digitalizer Plus fits onto the Scandalux base plate and it fits snugly, you can move it around. This is the 35 millimeter scanner with the metal plates on the bottom that hooks magnetically on. There are some other notches too. Also the bubble levels on there are super helpful, but we'll get into that as we go through this video because Lomography was kind enough to send me this Digitalizer Max setup to test. Our first test material comes from this session I did with Ashley on some nearby handball courts, which were um, littered with some gross things, but I won't go into that. I shot Kodak Gold 200-120 and a roll of Lomography 100, actually, which is interesting since a lot of people think it's Kodak Gold 200, but uh, my findings were a little... I'm not sure. We'll get to that in a second but I did a mixture of flash and ambient lighting. You'll see the light here at the sunset was getting kind of cool. Uh, I did some backlighting too, mostly to test the Kodak Gold, but I also shot it with the Lomo 100. I was using my Hasselblad 500 ELX, mostly with a 40 millimeter CF FLE lens. I had that little bare bulb Godox flash with me, which I used for about half the photos. But I just got too into this sunset light and these shadow patterns and I wanted to put them to work instead of relying on flash for the entire session. But this was a super quick shoot. It was great. Ashley's awesome to work with. I don't even think it took us 30 minutes to do this. And then it was home to dev and scan. The Digitalizer Plus clamp system for the 120 scans is a little fidgety, I would say, but it allows you to get full rebate scans they have a an insert that I didn't think to use that crops off the rebate and holds the film probably a little flatter, but overall I thought it was, especially after I got into a rhythm, pretty easy to use and not as easy as my like slide through 120 holder, but it allows a better frame for pictures and the magnetic clamps work well. Long story short, the only difference I saw between Lomo 100 and Gold 200 was that Lomo 100 seemed to have a little more contrast. The base was thicker and darker and this is a Lomo 100 shot to give you an idea. Back to the digitalizer. If I had one area for improvement it would probably be some kind of improved guide or depth on the little hinge area so it'd be a little easier to get the lid shut without curling the film but I want to use this next session to highlight a unique ability that was brought to my attention. I was talking with Bill Manning of Studio C41 about the Digitalizer, especially the Scan Deluxe base plate that comes with a Max. It has these uh, sliders that allow you to position your film. I think they're intended for fine adjustment, but the other cool thing that you can do with these is you can quickly and very precisely position your 120 film for panoramic stitching which is a method of camera scanning where you take two pictures like a panoramic photo of your negative and you stitch them together in software like Photoshop or Lightroom. It's great because it gives you double the resolution if you do it right and on average I could probably get a good 30 to 50 megapixels 
per frame of a Hasselblad square. This number can balloon even more with something like a 6x7 frame, which is extra cool. And I just think it's great because one of the biggest headaches with doing pano stitches is the movement part where you try to position a frame to take two photos of. You need a little bit of overlap so the computer has something to work with, but also you want it to be as straight as possible because the software will make the picture pretty wonky if you don't give it the space or the precision to combine the two photos. Now I only did one frame with this method, but it was possibly the easiest pano stitch I've ever done. I have been experimenting for a while now with the Sony a7R 3s pixel shift multi-shot, which yields good results, although I haven't like put it up to a resolution or print test or anything, but it seems to do a pretty good job and it saves me a minute and also it's a lot easier to work with with pictures that say that have large amounts of negative space, like open skies which can freak out software when it's trying to stitch two frames or more together. If you're not super familiar with camera scanning, here's a little glimpse into my current process. You'll notice the bubble level on the shoe mount of the Sony, and I'm using the live view and back screen to fine tune my focus. Modern autofocus lenses might make this a little easier, but that's kind of what I got and I like this system and also like the manual focus because it locks in to focus pretty well and I also have a self timer here but I have since started using a release cable which helps the process and makes it faster and now we'll look at my one pixel shift shot you can pause if you want to this is an extreme crop to show you the detail you can get and no, I'm not going to compare, but I can do a full video of a comparison if you really want to see that. I kind of try to not get bogged down in technical stuff that deep. These types of scans produce a resolution I feel like I can work with and that I won't regret scanning in this style, like let's say in three or four years, and if I want to make a larger print. Despite probably knowing a lot of technique, I also like to just not get too bogged down because it can just suck up all your time and it gets real tedious and I like to kind of bridge the gap between nice technique and just getting it done. But finally we're going to look at some 35mm scans. To start this session which I did mostly on a Nikon F3 I took out a roll of the new Lomography Metropolis film the 2021 formula. Metropolis is a film that I always think, oh, it's going to be too gimmicky, I'm just going to really hate it, and then I shoot it and look at it, and I really like it. I wanted to try my first roll of Metropolis in this setting with flash and bright light at 400 ISO just to see what it does, and also had some expired Kodak Portra 160 VC. I shot it at 80. So you see the basic film loading technique with the wheel. It really doesn't work any other way than putting the film in that way and turning the wheel that way. You can back it up a little bit after it's in. The only time I ran into any problem with this setup was with some extremely curly film. You might have to work a little bit to kind of get it to start in there, but once it was in, it was in. It was nice and fast. It was really easy to work out a rhythm. And these scans uh, might be displaying a little weird. It's hard to tell. Um, the white border on this is from the mask that Lomography provides. It, they have either all sprockets or mask with no rebate. And it would be nice if they would do something in between that. I left the white border on here just because I felt like it felt more like a darkroom print, which I think is cool. The more desaturated shots on here are the Metropolis 2021, which I love. Has a very desaturated, more neutral feel, but with certain colors that really pop. I really like where they're going with it, and I'm sorry if it's not displaying right. If you have any ideas how I could get these to display better, let me know. I've tried like sRGB and other color spaces and other things like that. But anyway, let's wrap this thing up.
the Lomography Digital Liza Plus Max or Plus and Max, whatever you get, is a great bang for the buck buy. I endorse it even though you could say I was bribed by getting to try it out for a couple of weeks. I don't know. But they didn't pay me anything. They didn't sponsor me. They just let me try it out, which is cool. So thank you, Lomography. And I was impressed. It's not as fast as the Mongoose or as affordable as the Pixelator, but it kind of is as versatile as the Pixelator in a lot of ways. And it does a lot of great things aside from wishing it would have a mask for the 120 frame with a little bit of rebate instead of all the rebate and the same for 35 millimeter. I just like a little border. I don't necessarily have to have sprockets, but that might be cool. And there's not a whole lot other than they could maybe have a brighter light. They could maybe have a bigger light for like four by five. All things considered, it's a, an amazing deal and I recommend it. I think it's great. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this, like and subscribe to the channel, comment and turn on notifications and I'll see you soon. Thanks.